Okay, Ryan, you can't walk both sides of the road here, so if you're over that double yellow line, bring them over here. I met my wife, Connie, I would think, back in 1978. Ooh, that was a while ago. We were both training in Tucson, Arizona, and this uh, very, very handsome, younger man, by the way, he's a couple of years younger than I am, uh, showed up on the ride uh, with his Colorado State Champion jersey on. And I was on full panic mode because I was this 19-year-old wannabe bike racer and she was the reigning queen of bike racing. Everyone knew who Connie Carpenter was and my family knew who Davis Finney was. I'd never seen a bike race before. Here I was in North Boulder Park, 50,000 people there. There's a men's division and a women's division which is one of the beauties of the Red Zinger Coors Classic series. And Connie Carpenter was this feisty, red-headed, super confident bike racer who was winning everything in cycling, and this was her big win. She came here and she slaughtered everybody. I just started seeing bicycle racing and the flavor, the internationalness, the color, the speed, the danger, all these things were so attractive to me. I was hooked right there. I had up my game because when we started traveling to races together in 1981, she would inevitably win virtually every race she entered. And so I didn't want to be the boyfriend who was like, oh, poor Davis, you know, he's just barely finishing these races. And Connie, of course, is the dominant queen. So I pretty quickly stepped up my game and was fairly competitive. And that's what landed me a spot with Team 7-Eleven. I raced with them as a junior, and I'd often race with seniors. And Davis Finney was the man to beat, Davis Finney or Ron Kiefel. So I thought, wow, racing in Colorado is pretty hard, but you only have to beat these two people not knowing that they were two of the best in the world. Davis is fun to race with, but when he was helping me or other riders on the team, if it was time to chase, he had no qualms about getting to the front and pulling with everyone else. Looking back now, some of my favorite memories of the 7-Eleven years, which were my favorite years of racing, were races we didn't win. Protecting a jersey, you know, a brake had gone up the road, couldn't bring it back, but we, we went and went and went till the end and made everyone suffer along the way. It was, it was a fun team to be on. Bike racers seem to come in a couple of different sizes. We had a guy out of Boulder, Colorado, who started winning stages of the bike race. One of the first that he won was live on CBS. Oh boy, it's about time, you know, I, I've never won this race, never in it about five years now. This is the greatest feeling in the world. We invented this cash register sound effect that we played over the PA system. So every time he won premiums, he comes across the line with his famous hands up in the air. He'd go like that in the air and we'd hit this cash register sound. So we developed this relationship together where we helped make Davis Finney into being a real personality rock star. And then him with his own personality and bravado, taking the race forward as only an athlete like that can. Davis did stand out. He was so aggressive. In the Criteriums, he could pedal through corners and just rail it like, like nobody else. He was intimidating. I think the key element with most of those guys, they weren't nice on the bike. When it was game time, it was game on. And uh, they, he'd push you right out of the way if you were in his line, which I rarely was because I was watching him from well behind. Connie was enticed back to cycling by a call from a former team sponsor who said that they've just announced in Los Angeles they're going to incorporate women cycling into the Olympics for the first time period. Everything changed the minute they announced that women cycling would be included in the Olympics. It was a much bigger deal. And Connie turns to me and says, I'm going to come back, I'm going to win the road race, and I'm going to retire the next day. For me that was it. It was win the Olympics and get out. And, you know, of course, that was much easier said than done. <laughs> the first ever women's road cycling race. Watch the beginning of the first ever Olympic women's cycling event. Boy, I could not have not gone to the 1984 Olympic Games. First of all, they were right after the Coors Classic. Connie Carpenter had competed at this event and withdrawn. Davis had competed at my event and withdrawn. These next two days are real critical in terms of my Olympic preparation and 
I just can't let go of that. Hopefully everyone will forgive us for this if uh, we do indeed come back with some medals from the Olympics. So I had a vested interest in going there and seeing my friends compete in the games. Well, the race was July 29th, 1984, which was the first day of the opening day of the Olympic Games. People had camped out to watch cycling. This had never occurred in America before. There was literally hundreds of thousands of people lining the road. We drove in and looking at my teammates going, we better win. <laughs> and they just saw our van and they went nuts. But it just felt good. I mean, my overarching sensation was standing on the starting line with a very small pack of women. There were probably 50 of us and we were making history. And I knew it, I was completely cognizant of that fact that we had already won all of us by just standing on that starting line. And I watched Connie's race on a little TV, a little black and white TV in the back of the van with, you know, the antennas. I mean, this is 1984. There's no iPhone to watch TV, no tour tracker. And the first thing I hear is... They are two of the stars of bicycle racing. She has ruled women's competition for years. His is a rising star. He is Davis Finney. She is Connie Carpenter. They will forever be remembered as the married racing stars of Boulder. Connie Carpenter and Davis Finney. And I'm like, oh, thanks. That was just as much pressure as I needed to pile on. What I remember is standing on the starting line. I remember the gun going off. Here they come, over two hours, almost 50 miles. And so I wasn't distracted by anything except the fact that Jeannie Longo had disappeared. Well, where's Longo? So I'm looking behind me, and I don't see Jeannie. And meanwhile, the sprint started. Here goes the sprint. It's all come down to this after 50 miles. And so, of course, everybody's setting up trying to figure out who's gonna make the first move. Twig and Carpenter, less than 100 yards to go now. And this is the point where Davis is watching the finish down there, saying, you know, go. Go, 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 because Rebecca Twig, one of her main competitors, had, had, had already made her jump. Rebecca Twig has got the lead. She's got the lead. And I'm still distracted back here, you know, and it's probably 600 meters to go, so I had a ways. And we were sitting there right on the finish line in Mission Viejo, 1984, Los Angeles, Olympic Games. And here's the final sprint with Rebecca Twig and Connie Carpenter coming to the line. Carpenter. Carpenter on the outside. And Connie punches her bike. Carpenter. I think Carpenter got her. Carpenter just did get her at the very end. I'm pounding on the back of Joe Coors. He's turning around like, what, what are you doing to me? Connie throws her bike. She takes the necessary lead to take the race. Notice she threw the bike. Because she couldn't have thrown her bike and done it effectively because she was slowing. But because I was coming fast, I had to come in and just really give it that Davis Finney throw. She ended up winning by that much. And I thought I had actually won by about that much. And it wasn't until morning shows the next day where I saw it on the replay and I was like, ooh, <laughs> that close. I was really happy when I stopped racing. I don't think I ever second guessed it. In fact, in my mind, Training for the 1984 Olympics. Every day was in full color leading up to that day. And after that, I hadn't even thought of one day past that Olympic day. In my mind, it was just an empty calendar. I didn't allow myself to think about anything but that. Good thing I won. The husband of Davis Finney, who will be out on the track in an hour and 15 minutes. Well, that's one gold on the mantle in Boulder for Connie Carpenter. I looked out on the road and Connie comes wheeling around the corner and I go and she goes I think I won and I was like yeah and so I, gave, I ran over to her and gave her a brief hug and a kiss and then focused on my day which didn't go quite as swimmingly. I got fifth but I made some mistakes and still my teammate Alexa Grayball won. It was such a weird feeling because I was elated for Connie on one hand but I'd obsessed about winning the Olympic road race myself for several years and, and, and I just didn't win. And even for in the immediate after, aftermath, I remember meeting multiple people who, who would, would, not knowing who I was, would go on and on about, oh, that marvelous redhead from Wisconsin, she won the women's race. And what a fantastic win that was, and yada, yada, yada. And oh, 
I think something happened to her husband, though. That poor guy was supposed to win. <laughs> and, and, and I'd be like, yeah, that poor guy. Bummer. Parkinson's steals your ability to do simple things easily. And so everything is, is slowed down. When I was a bike racer, I was a sprinter. I lived for the last few hundred meters of a bike race. The only way to come across the line first was to slow everything down in my mind by paying absolute attention to the moment. I used to revel in those final five or 10 kilometers because there was nothing else that mattered in my life except for being inside that group. And the more I focused, the more everything slowed down and I could see the flow and I knew the right wheel to be on. It's a marvelous feeling to be in the moment. From the outside, it, it looks like chaos. And yet, when you're inside that vortex of speed and noise and bumping and pushing, if you're really in it, it's, it's actually a fairly calm place. And that calmness is something I find with Parkinson's now, is that I take away the speed and the thrill and the excitement of a bunch finish. And you're left with daily life with simple mundane tasks. But I've found that when I pay attention to them, I not only can accomplish them, but I can accomplish them with a certain amount of satisfaction. It was probably Max Testa, who's a good friend of ours and a, was Davis's team doctor and now Taylor's team doctor, who said to me, you know, it'll take Davis a few years to reinvent himself. And that was really true. And it was good he said that to me because it also helped me frame what we were going to go through because the first few months were horrible. But once you, you kind of accept it and you find a rhythm and you figure out how you're going to deal with it, you know, you pick it up and you go on. But I understand the fear and the fear is of the unknown. Where, where is this going to take us? This isn't what I signed up for. Well, you know, Davis didn't sign up for it either. Myself and my tribe, as I call the Parkinson's community, we know loss. We know what it's like to lose physical function, mental clarity, speaking ability, but we also know gain. And the gain is, is that life continues daily. And if you choose to live it, even if you're compromised, you still have, there's, there's still so much beauty and, and positivity out there. But you have to be able to, to see that and the one great lesson I've learned from bike racing is, is, is by putting myself into a moment-to-moment -moment state. When I was a bike racer, that's how I was able to win races, was giving that moment absolute focus. And now as a person living with Parkinson's, I've learned that life is infinitely richer than I once envisioned. Despite the loss of, of function, because I because I have that ability to look at, at, at each little thing I do as, as its own process. And it, it's given me a very rich life. Blah, blah, blah. That sounds... I had that, and then I lost it. Damn it! It was, like, going so well.